What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Star Nation. my name is Shanks and today we are on the beautiful and epic map Westfold. It's a phenomenal great 1v1 matchup between Isengard and Gondor. So basically Theodin has no more right to say where was Gondor when Westfold fell because I see Gondor on the right side of the map against the purple Isengard player Principino. That's an old replay but I personally enjoy to cast those old replays because the game was just much more active back in the day and we had like uh, thousands of online players nowadays unfortunately the online community is really close to be dead there is not much activity however we will hopefully be able to host a tournament very soon for the patch 2.22 and you are also able to participate and the best place to be connected with other BFME players is to join our discord community you can find the link for that in the description down below we have indeed over 7400 people in the discord between BFME 1, 2 and the Rise of the Witch King players. So Isengard's goal early on is to keep those settlements protected and Gondor will have a hard time to contest. He was even using the Elven Wood defensively, which means Isengard should have at bare minimum two settlements outside untouched. That's a huge map, right? We have plenty, plenty of settlements on this map. Right now he has three mills, but this mill is actually getting attacked by the Hobbit Peregrine Took. He is taking care of the enemy Lumber Mill workers. And for that reason, this money, I mean, this mill is not gonna give Isengard any kind of benefits or money in long terms. And Gondor wasn't even able to get any of these settlements yet. So those two settlements, as you can see and tell, are still open. And that's a double farm start for Gondor too. That means he will have cheaper Gondor nines, yes, but his upgrades are gonna be super delete. And there's a stable coming up that's a very interesting build, or I need to say. So Isengard was able to defend himself with this settlement. Also, this settlement is looking good. The Hobbit uh, will need some time to be able to destroy this Lammer Mill. The Hobbit's DPS against buildings is not the greatest. This Gondor soldiers, they are kind of forced to camp on the Elven Wood until the, um, you know, the Urukai are gone. But the Uruks now, they will be able to capture even more settlements. So the stable has to come up on the field for the Gondor player, you know, as soon as possible. He needs the Gondor Knights on the field very soon to be able to contest the Isengard play otherwise that's gonna get out of control and Isengard will be come the Bill Gates of Middle Earth be even though his base is looking empty right now but don't get fooled by that because that's gonna be changed in within a couple of seconds once the money start kicking in from those mills outside Isengard should be having no eco problems whatsoever that's a nice matchup though, I like that. I mean, I personally like Gondor against Isengard or Isengard against Rohan the most um, because there is no fail beast. When you play against Mordor as good faction, there is a chance that the Mordor player will get rich and he will be able to recruit a fail beast and then it's really annoying to play against. All right, so we see Gondor Knights on the field, the first battalion. Um, he's gonna go for the second one as you know, soon as possible because you need, on a map like Westfold, which is a gigantic and ginormous map, right? You need to have at bare minimum 3-4 Gondor Knights at the very same time. One of them you want to send through the middle, one of them through the top side, one of them through the bottom side. You want to keep your mills or farms protected and pressure also the enemy mills 24-7. I mean, that's your primary goal because Isengard, once again, you, sh you don't want to give Isengard too much money. And now we will have the Uruk Pit level 2, which will give Isengard the chance to recruit multiple pikemen. And these pikemen are definitely required. The only good thing about the situation for the Gondor faction is that on this map Westfold, you have plenty of creeps. So Warg layer, Goblin layer, and then you can get the power points unlocked really fast to get the Alvin summon unlocked. The first Alvin summon should always be used for map control fights. So you want to be able to kill as many pikemen as possible. Isengard is like really a lot of settlements outside. And the thing is that those Lumber Mills are also giving the Isengard player 30% wood bonus. That means a furnace, which normally would cost 350, now will only cost 245. So he saves more than 100 resources on one of the cheapest buildings in the game. Armory, which normally would cost 1200, only will cost now 840. That's a huge discount. So it's like a win win situation. The stable is level 2, we have now in total 3 Gondor Knights upon the field. One of them is creeping the Warg layer at the top left side of the map. We have the other one fighting for the map control at the bottom side. And this battalion was also killing this mill on the left side in the middle. So Isengard need to kind of make sure that Gondor is not taking you know, every single creep on the map. That's very important too, because you don't want to fight against Elvin Summon very early. The good thing for Isengard, however, in this current situation of the game is... 
that the blacksmith from Gondor was coming up super delayed. It means it needs still some time to hit level 2. And for that reason, the uh, upgrades are going to be quite delayed. And Gondor will not be able to go for a base rush anytime soon. Warp, fat, uh, warp Pit is you know pretty nice because you need some mobile units to be able to contest. And Gondor might need to build a barracks if he doesn't want to be in trouble. You know, at this point of the game, I believe Isengard could even afford a second Urupit. And just keep spamming pikemen. Pikemen are the magical weapon that you are fighting as Isengard against Gondor. Two power points in the bank. One more power point away from getting the Elven summon unlocked. And in the meantime, he's creeping a lot. Like, really a lot. We have only the creeps at the bottom left side. Isengard is taking care of these with the pikemen. And he was even using Warchant to make those pikemen a bit stronger. And the troll layer in the middle is also remaining on the field. But that's pretty much it. Isengard on a map like this could have skipped even the industry if he wanted to. And go for the, for the Tainted Land as soon as possible. Because you need to be able to cover the upcoming Elven Wood. Elven Wood, besides giving you increased armor, also works like a freezing ring. It means every unit from your opponent on your Alvin Wood or Tainted Land will lose their leadership bonuses. We have lured upon the field the fighting Urukai. Okay, we are, uh, I mean, we can hear him recruiting even more and more Lamrim workers. Uh, Uruk Pikeman almost level 3, one power point collected after the war chant in the industry versus the tower. He was building a tower here for whatever reason. <laughs> It was very confusing. I think he misclicked. <laughs> okay, now he want to replace all the farms with blacksmiths. And if you are wondering why he is doing that, it's because of the, you know, the steel bonus. You want to get your upgrades as cheap as you can. Like 40% discount is the magical number because he has in total three Gondor Knights on the field and they need Forge Blades, Heavy Armor and the Night Shield upgrade. It would be a lot of money. You would have to pay additionally and you don't have to, you know. That's why you can always demolish the farms early on and get blacksmiths instead so he has in total now six for the maximum discount for 360 instead of paying 480 or 540 the pikes are getting killed by the troll gondor is playing so nice this game he has now almost like really close to get the elven summon unlocked and once again the first elven summon should be definitely used defensively but he might also go for a peace rush we shall see does he have shields yes sir he has shields and Isengard luckily sees them coming now in the middle of the map. He has even Blades purchased. That means he needs to recruit more and more and more pikemen. Because losing the Uruk Pit would literally mean you would lose your entire momentum of the game. He's really close for the Alvin summon. Really, really close. And boom, he's gonna get it unlocked right now. And he will be potentially summoning them right off the bat. Armory for the for the Pork Riders. Alvin Wood. And that's why, imagine in this situation, a tainted land. There would be a awesome situation for Isengard. Lourdes is level 3, can draw the sword. Hey, be careful, Gondor is playing, playing this so good, man. He's actually pressing S when he needs to disengage when he has to. And stalls the fight here around this land, because that's gonna give him 40% increased armor. And with shields and heavy armor and forge blades, those Gondor Knights are actually hitting like an absolute track. But in the meantime, take a look into the minimap. Like, Gondor has only like one Two farms outside, right? Yeah, two farms outside, and Isengard has every other farm. It means even if he loses towers, units, it doesn't really matter. All he needs to do is protect the Uruk Pit. That's your main, primary, and most valuable building and structure in your Isengard castle. Does he have heal? Uh, yeah, he used already heal. Protect this. You cannot let this die. I know the elves, elven units are annoying. Lord is using carnage. And, oh my goodness, hitting like a truck. The towers are getting killed one by one. The Gondor Knights are almost immune to damage at this point from the towers. And that's why you need to recruit more and more and more and more pikemen. Don't let them take it down. Don't let them take it down. It's gonna hurt you so much to lose that. Warp Riders are re-engaging. Does he have land now? Yeah, he could go for the land, but that's gonna be painful. Oh, that's really bad. Because now, no more pikemen anytime soon right he needs to rebuild the uruk pit which also costs some time he needs to eight pair minimum to recruit two crossbow men and one uruk high and that's the only way you can get the uruk pit to level two that's the fastest way that will cost him around about two minutes and two minutes in rts games can be a really long time the will rise you, yeah crossbow men are required 
They will give you double the experience in compared to the Uruk Uruks. And what you can also do as Isengard, but he should be doing by now, is definitely getting outpost control. That's very important, you know? Outpost control, you don't want to give Gondor too much time. You don't want them to... Because there, he has more space to play, if this makes sense for you guys. He has less things to protect. That means he can play more aggressively. Isengard has a lot of um, space which has to be protected. It means Isengard will most likely lose more units in compared to the Gondor player. That's why you need to try to put pressure on the enemy castle. That's the only way you can stop the pressure what is happening on you. Get the outpost here, build siege warrigs, get some rams. Don't even, you don't even need to get barista. Or you can even go for ladders. But pressure his base. Force him to get back to his castle. During all this time, you can keep skilling. Even if the first push, first siege doesn't end up being successful, it's not the end of the world because you have the momentum. You have the advantage. You have map control. You can go for Saruman, Lourdes, upgrades, combos. You can afford that. But you need to bring the fight to them, as Boromir would like to say. We have now Saruman on the field, the White Wizard. And he might also capture this one, by the way. Also get this one. Like, you can get literally every outpost. But again, he needs to get the Urupit to level 2 first. He didn't even recruit any units by now. I mean, it's easier said when you are actually observing and casting a game. Because there is so much stuff he has to be careful about. That it kind of makes sense that he can't, you know, watch every single spot. Now, look how many Gondor Knights we have on the field. Holy moly. They are trying to get to the crossbar, man. They will get a beautiful trample off. At this point of the game, you know, Gondor is just getting too many power points unlocked. Three more power points in a quarter, and he will be able to summon the giant eagles. And that's going to be a huge power spike for the Gondor player. And who is this player, by the way? Limited. And he will be unlimited when he gets there. Okay, that was a nice one, actually. You guys gotta be, you know, you guys, please make sure to leave a like on this video. Likes are helping quite a lot, and it will take you two seconds. And when you are down there, you can you can also subscribe. Just why not? If you are into this nostalgia, into the old classical battle for Middle Earth games, BFM One, Two, and Rise of the Witch King, that's the right channel for you. War chance um, is available. Yes, devastation was actually chosen. Why though? I mean, when you are that close for the field of fires, you go for the field of fires. Devastation is not only slowing you down, but also makes you minus four power points when it comes to reach to Balrog. In those games, like Gondor against Isengard on a map like Westfold, it most of the time end up with a Balrog summon, you know? And now you just delete yourself a Balrog. Four power points. That's a long travel. Oh, Gondor is paying attention. Lords is level five. That's good. He has leadership unlocked. And Gondor is recovering, not only in terms of the momentum, but also in terms of the map control. He was summoning the Alps for the second time, I missed that. The outpost is going to be definitely taken down. Gondor is now even highly leveled Gondor Knights. One of them is level 2, one of them is level 4. And yeah, Warg Riders are going to be outskilled. So basically, Warg Riders are like an early mid-game unit from Isengard, but they will get outskilled by the Gondor Knights. And look at that, boys. We have the White Wizard. It has to be good for something. Do it, Gandalf. Oh, they won't move. Oh, I hear, I hear lords. Where is lords? Did he actually lose lords? No. Lords is here. But he already clicked on him with the cripple. That's why we heard him saying they, will, they won't move. He was able to save one of them. That's good. That's pretty good. And yeah, I mean, look at the map control in the meantime. Look at the minimap at the bottom left side of your screen, ladies and gentlemen. That's looking already in much better for Gondor. Indeed, he has more than 50% of the map, which is awesome when it comes to fight against Isengard. I mean, don't get me wrong. Isengard is still making a lot of bank and cash, but um, not. it's not about the money you make. It's about the money you deny your opponent to make, if this makes sense for you guys. So map control doesn't only mean you make a lot of money, but at the same time you deny your opponent to get the resource income he's looking for. So at this point of the game, Isengard with two, three Lamry Mills can still make a decent amount of money, but you can't deny Gondor from getting rich either. So you gotta you gotta fight for the map control. You need to spam lots of pikemen on the field. He's camping, he's playing it very sloppy. And that will give Gondor the chance to not only, you know, get the map control, but also get power points collected left and right from Gandalf. 
uh, towers coming up. I mean, he's so rich at this point, right? He's so rich. Is he paying attention to something? Yes, he does. He will get away with the Warcriders just in time. Um, the problem the problem right now is there is Gandalf, right? And you need to be careful to not level him up like for free. If this Gandalf gets level 10, you know what's going to happen. War of Power, Nostra Crest, and the army is going to be wiped out. Level 7 Gondorites, level 8 to be sorry. Sorry, yeah, I was having like bad eyes, I believe. I need maybe glasses. Level 8 Gondorites will be able to get away. Oh yeah, the Vestition has been used, and Isengard, uh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Isengard now has to make an army, you know, and the army from Isengard is the most expensive army. You need to invest 200 for the Uruks, 400 for the Crossbowmen, that's 600 in total. And you need to give them banner, fire arrow for 600, heavy armor, and ideally also forge plates. This combo will cost you around about 2,500 to 3,000. Which is a lot of money like two of them is you know equally as warped as <laughs> saruman that's unbelievable that's why isengard is also the one faction with the most eco boost devastation fuel the fires industry because isengard needs that really needs that five power points in the bank after the devastation he needs only one more for the field of fires or freezing rain freezing rain wouldn't be a great call against gondor because gondor is a faction that doesn't really rely too much on leadership bonuses because you have only gandalf on the other side, Gondor has three power points collected after the heal, Alvin Wood, can have the white power point from the spellbook, and the Alvin allies. That means he's only three power points away from his mighty giant Eagles. And Eagles, as you guys know, in Battle for Middle Earth 1, are dealing insane amount of damage to heroes. That means the only goal from Eagle Summon from Gondor should be to kill the Lords. If the Lords is dead, your Gandalf can shine bright like a diamond. There is no Orcon, boys. There is no Orcon, and once again, a beast rush is happening. There is non-stop pressure, and that's a really bad situation for Isengard. You don't want to be building your, oh, beautiful fireball from the young wizard. I mean, not really young, but he looks young. He looks young, you know. You know, Saruman was actually taking good care of himself. Look at this guy. And also the voice from Christopher Lee. Holy guacamole. This guy is actually kind of ASMR. You know, just like, also Sauron, guys. You know, build me an army worthy of motor. Sounds so ASMR lots of pressure he has now outpost control he might recruit some rangers and put them inside of that that would that's also gonna be his plan now he has the bottom side full, fully in 100 percent under, under his control this outpost has zero protection though i mean it's hard for gondor to make a lot of stuff work with the gondorites because there is saruman the fireball that can mess you up if you don't pay attention he might he might use warm tongue on your gondorites and steal them and make them fight for him yeah it's not it's not the easiest task but he's using the momentum and the pressure by doing other stuff macro is equally as important if not more important than micro you don't want to be doing one thing you need to do multiple things multitasking is the key to victory just like map control we have double ram three rams now even though it looks like they have leadership but they don't the uruks wielding the ram have leadership bonuses but they don't do anything they don't even attack so that's gonna be the first time we see isengard finally making a move against the enemy castle this castle has four towers and he has even enough money to build more or even eventually some trebuchet upgrades you shall see rangers getting inside the outpost this outpost has been taken down this outpost will be hard to be taken down level six gandalf almost six power points guys oh that's gonna be a tough one <clears throat> we shall see um, because if he gets, I mean, I believe he will get it. He will get the Eagle Salmon. And then it's going to be messy. Oh, but he doesn't want to actually wait for him to make a move. He's making himself a move. Oh, that's, that's going to be painful. These are four Gondor Knights with Gandalf. And the Pikemen, they can't do much against Gandalf, right? He needs to micro. Oh, Visa Blast. Urupir has been taken down. Now the base is open for a attack. Lord and Saruman are moving. Oh, that's a perfect situation. The Eagle Summon now would be juicy. You gotta, you gotta cripple him down. Is Gana paying attention? No, he doesn't. And Gana gets cri crippled down. There comes the giant Eagle Summon. Does he have Warchant? He has Warchant, but... You, yeah, that's the thing. You need now Tainted Land. You have to pick Tainted Land. That's very important. But again, that's also gonna delay his Balrog. That's also gonna delay his thing. 
And the Eagles, I believe, were able to buy enough time for Gandalf to be released from the spell of the... Of, oh, he even killed Saruman. Can Gandalf get away, though? That's a big question. Does he heal? Yes, sir. He's going to use heal. And now the crippled duration is gone. You see how they are, how hard they are chunking Gandalf, though. I mean, they have Warchan plus Lurz leadership. That's in total 110% increased damage leadership. Remember, in Battle for Middle of One, the leadership is able to stack. So you can make it really like an insane amount of numbers. I mean, in a 4v4 match in which all the four unique factions are included, we are talking about numbers over 9,000, guys. That's crazy. Like, you can make one single Urukai so strong that he can kill 15 Urukai by himself. Like, you can one-shot literally everything. Mordor, Isengard, Gondor, and Rohan combination, and you go all leadership bonuses, holy guacamole. Your eyes will be blinded from all the leadership bonuses and glow of the units. Three power points, he's really getting closer and closer for the army of the Red Powers back. Gandalf was able to get away, and he has still more than 50% map control, which is impressive as Gondor against Isengard. The outpost he has zero protection will be also taken down. Isengard is kind of dropping down. He even went for the freezing rain, which is a mistake. You don't, again, you don't need freezing rain against Gondor. Uh, you need definitely the, you know, fuel the fires. You need money, income, because you will lose a lot of stuff at this point, right? Regardless what you want to do, you will always end up losing units, heroes. That's why you need as much sustain in your economy as you can get. And fuel the fires for hundred percent more money from the from the lumber mills is gonna be quite helpful. Okay, the rams are where are the rams actually? Did he lose them? No, he actually was able to break one part of the wall. But look at this defense of the Gondor Castle. Do you see that? Trebuchet, trebuchet towers. He has enough money because he has map control to even repair the part of the wall, which cost him in total two thousand. But it doesn't matter. Okay, just kill. But look at this man. Oh, that's unbelievable, guys. I must get to safety. Oh, I hear Gandalf. Oh, oh, Gandalf has been taken down. Level 7 only. I was expecting him to be level 10, but nope, that's not being the case. 200 command points, and he is almost full. He's almost command. I can't even talk, guys. Sorry. He's almost command points kept, and only 4 power points away from his army of the dead special summon. On the other side, we have 9 power points after the freezing rain, so he needs still 11 power points to get his Balrog summon, the demon from the ancient world. And the demon will be able to cast uh, to cast his breath fire inside the enemy castle and take down everything. There is nothing Gondor play can do, but Gandalf can try to stop him, but all it takes is one fire whip and Gandalf is gonna be literally one-shotted. No Faramir and no Boromir all game long. No love for the captains of Gondor. No love for the brothers of Gondor. There comes a big commitment with Gondor Knights. One of them is so highly leveled. Level 5, by the way. Level 7. Gandalf is down, though. I mean, he needs to revive Gandalf for 1920. And the reason why it's so cheap is because his outputs. The statues are giving you hero bonus. Now, right now, as we are talking, he has 20% hero bonus for when it comes to revive and recruit heroes. That's why, for example, Faramir, a hero that normally costs 1200, will only cost you 960. And Boromir will cost you 1280. He normally costs you 1600 in total. In 1.06. The base is falling apart, boys. Oh, beautiful fireball, man! And one battalion is going to be taken down just like that. Saruman is getting level 7, but the thing is, Saruman, I mean, there are like heroes like Saruman and Gandalf. When you recruit them in battle for middle of one, he's gonna miss the warm tongue, he's gonna cancel it before the ability goes through. And again, there are, you know, heroes like Aragorn, for example, or, or Bor not Boromir, um, Gandalf and Saruman, they come on the field while being level 5. However, unlike Gandalf and Aragorn, Saruman doesn't have any benefits. To unlock additional abilities when he gets more and more levels. Now we see more and more Gondor Knights. It feels like he has double stable, but the stable is level 3 for 50% faster build speed from the Gondor stable. That's unbelievable. You can recruit units literally in a few seconds. It's like permanent cold heart. The Gondor Knights are getting inside the jeans. The mill is going to be taken down. Isengard is trying to recover, but this is going to just be favoring the Isengard player. I mean the Gondor player, because he has almost the army of the dead. The Eagle Summon is unlocked. 
Gonna have his back on the menu. So basically, everything is looking great for the. Oh my goodness. He's gonna use. Oh, Saruman, look at this DPS, boys. Whoa. That's so that's so busted. <laughs> I mean, we nerfed the Eagles in the patch 2.22. They are damage against heroes because that's kind of crazy. A hero that costs you 5k, but that comes the AOD special summon. Oh my goodness, boys. Gandalf is coming and saying, you shall not pass. He's going to be crippled, but there is no follow-up. Nothing can hurt him. Nothing can kill him. And the white wizard is going to get in safety just like that. And the Isengard, is the Isengard piece is falling. He has one outpost left, but it, look like, it looks like Principino won't be waiting until the last outpost also falls he's gonna leave the game and that's a clean victory for gondor in a phenomenal match on a beautiful map westfall so theodin stop complaining i've seen gondor was on the spot thank you guys so much for watching i hope this was enjoyable for you if it was please don't forget to leave a like subscribe for more content like this in the future this channel is dedicated to the uh, dedicated to the battle for middle earth games and we will have also a 1300 dollar tournament happening very soon for rise of the witch king it's gonna start at the beginning of march every game will be broadcasted on my channel twitch tv slash beyond standards link in the description down below i would love to meet you guys also in the upcoming live stream until then keep hitting like a truck and as always Stay beyond standards. Peace out.